Welcome back to Orange Hat Reviews. So, the media is frustrated. They're confused. Because Star Wars fans are arguing over the Mandalorian. Well, if they paid attention, they would actually see that some fans still are having disagreements. But I wouldn't say huge arguments. I would say agreements to disagree in some instances. But let's get into it with Forbes here. If you have been star or following Star Wars for uh, the past 40 years, you'll know that its fans love endlessly debating its various major and minor entries. Arguments which sometimes can turn quite hostile. And in the modern era of social, era of social media, have been spilled over to do active harm to some of the directors and stars of the latest films. Yeah, if you're talking about the Raylos stalking Adam Driver and his wife and threatening her to divorce him. Yeah. Haven't and haven't heard of anything else. The Rose Tico or Kelly Marie Tran being bullied off Instagram was not verified. Anyway, The Mandalorian, the new Disney Plus live-action Star Wars show, the first in history, seems different. While I don't want to say no more, or no one is arguing about The Mandalorian, in any capacity, the debates here seem relatively minor, as in Episode 4 wasn't quite as good as Episode 2, or The Mandalorian's statement about removing his hel helmet may go against canon. Generally speaking, however, the main split Star Wars fans, or among Star Wars fans, is whether or not you like the show, really like the show, or love the show. It seems to be uniting the Star Wars fan base on a level we have not seen in ages. If you travel back through time, it sure seems like even major live-action Star Wars releases had endured either a debate over its innate quality or if the fan base has been unified. It's because something was outright terrible. Let's have a look. The Solo Disney or so Disney blah, Solo 2018 was a rare commercial miss in that many fans simply weren't interested in non Harrison Ford revisiting the classic character. In the prequel, Solo performed so poorly relatively to other releases it altered Disney's entire plan for Star Wars films going forward. That wasn't the main problem with it. There was major political crap in it that was completely unnecessary. Plus, the story just wasn't that good. It lacked a one-third necessity of, the, of a Star Wars film, which is a lightsaber battle. But yeah. Go on. Anyway, Last Jedi, I think this is without question the most polarizing film on the list. Which has some saying that it's masterpiece and one of the series' best. While others are citing it is the prime example of a Disney era dismantling what true fans love about Star Wars. The discourse around the movie soiled the movie itself. It was so severe. That's because The Last Jedi broke so many of Disney's own canonical rules. It was bad writing. It also introduced pol real-world political crap and whatnot. Rogue One. I feel this might be the film that was the least controversial among the fans. They're basically just going over the list and whatnot. So we arrive at The Mandalorian, which after four episodes is technically the length of a feature film now, and we essentially, and will be essentially two of them by the time season one and it or and its eighth or eight thirty minute episode episodes have aired. Jesus, they have such poor weird writing. Favreau, writer of the series, has created something special here. Well, we can agree on that. Drawing on previous or pretty obvious influences of old samurai films and westerns, 
which were in turn original inspiration of the Star Wars in the first place. The Jedi are based on the samurai, after all. Through here, our Ronin is a bounty hunter, and the Jedi and Sith are nowhere to be found so far. The show has already created an iconic character in just four episodes in the blank-faced Mandalorian himself, voiced expertly by Pedro Pascal, who unfortunately may never get to show his face in the series due to the nature of the character. And of course, there's Baby Yoda, the most adorable creation in the Star Wars history, but one that isn't dismissed as kid stuff by fans like Ewoks or Jar Jar. Um... I like the Ewoks and Jar Jar Banks, that's my personal opinion. But anyway, who were played for comic relief, and if anybody knows anything about Jar Jar Banks, he was not originally brought on for comic relief, he was actually meant to be a reincarnation of Darth Plagueis. This was confirmed by Ahmed Best himself on Twitter. Baby Yoda is too cute and to hate no matter how hard your heart but also incredibly important to the plot of the series and Star Wars lore in general, given how little we know about Yoda's Force powerful species. That's because that is by design. George Lucas has said he wants that species to be as mysterious as possible. The show simply works. Its tight run times are working to its benefit, allowing its big budgets to maximize its effect. The minimalist cast carries the series, and these little mini arcs of the Mandalorian saving the day result in many of the best action sequences the series has seen. Oh my gosh, they spelled seen wrong. Bad writing gets me to pause, people. Even if they're laden with less CGI and their big budget movie of their than their big budget movie counterparts. Yeah, that actually works to its advantage, I'd argue. Last episode in particular highlighted how the smaller scale of the show works when, well, or show works well when suddenly an ATST, a mech we've seen a million times before, can become the most terrifying thing in the world when the stakes are lower. The Mandalorian is pitching a perfect game so far, and it has placated a fan base that is almost impossible to please. Can it keep this up? Who knows, but so far, so good. Here's the thing, Forbes. You're not understanding why we're not arguing. It's because we're united, or many of the fans are united in their like for The Mandalorian. We are not arguing because the people of the fan, or the people in the community of the Phantom Menace, we agree to disagree. And we unite under one thing. If it has identity politics, the story suffers. We don't want outside agendas put into Star Wars. That is what we were trying to convey. And that is what we have been conveying. If you don't like the fact that the show doesn't have any agenda in it, or outside agenda, politics or identity politics, SJW nonsense and all of that, well, guess what? That's your problem. Or if you don't like this stuff in Star Wars, then by all means, voice your opinion. You have a right to voice it. But if you are thinking it's weird because nobody is arguing over the Mandalorian, well, you should also pay attention because we have had micro-arguments. We've had micro-disagreements. And that is okay to have disagreements. Healthy discourse... Healthy disagreements are what keep a fan base united. And it is time that people realize that. Because otherwise, they're going to continue to play the toxic fandom game. All those people that threatened people with death simply because we didn't like episode 8. People who called us toxic simply because we asked Ryan Johnson a question about a disappearing knife in episodes 8 throne room fight scene. And he told us to suck his dick. Yeah, those are the toxic ones, including Ryan Johnson himself. But if you can't figure out why we're not arguing over the Mandalorian, 
then maybe you need to pay attention that this is how good storytelling is done for the most part. Anyway, folks, that is the video. You all know the drill. Like, comment, subscribe, share, all that jazz. Let me know down in the comments below what you think of this article. Do you think that it's weird that we're not fighting over the Mandalorian? Or are you thinking that the Mandalorian is a good show so far and that there's nothing to argue about except for minor little debates? Let me know down in the comments below. This has been Orange Hat Reviews. Catch you all on the next one.